Today, I'm an idiot. Now what? Help. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's pretty stupid, bro. I... Be better, man. And I'm an idiot. Gee, I wonder why the results were exactly the same. Such an idiot. What's good? It's the Hunter Hoff. I'm back with insane content. In this video, we're making the M3 even better. As I told you a long time ago, we're gonna make this the best M3 in the country. We're fixing the issue with the battery, doing some maintenance, and also a little upgrade. So sit back, relax, and let's see what happened. We're back! We're back on the M3! Last video, we replaced the rear wheel bearings. Go check out the video on the top right hand corner to see how that goes. Unfortunately, we were not able to start the car because the battery was completely dead. The battery management system did its job well because there was no power going to the car at all. So the battery management prevents the battery from completely discharging, destroying it. I then used a booster to get the car going again. Ugh. After letting it run for about 10 minutes, I was able to connect a battery charger to get the car fully charged up again. So I'm first going to show you how to connect this battery charger properly. And no, it's not at the rear of the car. We're going to do that right over here. So let's open up the hood and get it started. All right, so here we have a positive terminal and here we have a ground. These two points are specifically designed to charge the battery of the car. What I would like to do is to connect this trickle charger extension cord to these battery points so that I always have an easy entrance to connect the battery charger. So let me show you how that's done. So we're going to start out with the positive terminal, which is located under this lid. So if we open it up, oh, that's oh, awesome. Damn, that's pretty insane, bro. So we're going to undo this giant screw with the TP50. So then we're going to connect this charging points to the positive terminal. To do so, however, we're first going to drill this one out as this is too small to fit. Happens to me all the time. So let's go ahead and drill this out real quick. Then filing away the sharp edges. Now let's give this a go. All right, so let's see if this now fits. Like a glove. Then we're gonna put back on this bolt. Yeah, that looks good. So first we're going to close up this cap. Then we're going to route this through here, like so. So then we're going to do the same on the negative part of the cable. Negative Nancy here. This one simply slides over. Good and twist. So as you can see, the positive wire goes like this, below this plastic tab, underneath this rubber part, and then held together by a cable clip in one of those holes which is below there as well, just clips right in. I'll put a link to these cable clips in the description below. This should cause no rattles at all. It's all pretty sturdy, so uh, I'm happy with the results. All right, so this is our battery charger. I'm gonna open up this cap, connect it like so. Plug in the battery charger. And then we have it sitting like so. I'm pretty happy with this. The car is also pretty happy with this, I suppose. So it's now currently at stage 2, and it will eventually go up to stage 7. This battery is still in good condition. And by running the cable like so, we can also close the hood. So there we go. Now on to our issue. Alright, so I've got bad news and I've got good news. The good news is that there's no sound coming from this side anymore. However, we go to this side. Yeah. You can hear a definite ticking going on here. Not sure what that is, but I guess we'll just have to find out. All right, so as you could have seen by the video just now, there is still a ticking sound going on. And I may have an idea of what it's from. And it's pretty stupid, actually. So I've read something on the internet that gave me an idea of what it could be. First, I rang up the old owner and asked him if he had the standard wheel bolts of the car. These bad boys. So as you might remember, the car had spacers. I removed these, but reinstalled the longer wheel bolts. So I've read on the internet that these longer wheel bolts are able to scrape against the springs of the handbrake assembly, creating that ticking noise. So not the wheel bearings. 
So I'm gonna reinstall the normal sized wheel bolts and see if the ticking goes away. Should be quite something if that was the culprit. Let's do this. As you can see, this is the difference between the stock wheel bolts and the longer wheel bolts. I believe it's only 10 or 12 millimeters, but as we men know, that makes all the difference. All right, so as you can see, I'm currently in the process of replacing the longer wheel bolts for the shorter ones. And as you can see over here, okay, let me turn on a flashlight. And as you can see over there, that is the spring where supposedly the wheel bolt is touching against, making that sound. Not sure if any of this is true, but you know, we'll just uh, see what happens. So we're gonna undo the longer wheel bolts, remove them one by one, install the standard wheel bolts, tighten them, repeat the process for all four wheels and torque them all to spec. And there we go, sick editing, right? Please subscribe for sick editing. Thanks guys. All right, so the car is now up in the air. My homeboy Bastian is at the wheel. We're now gonna start it up and then run it through its gears to see if the sound is still there. Fire that bad boy up, Bastian. So we're currently under the car. So we're now in first gear, I believe. No sound so far. No sounds here either. And this is third gear. And as you can hear, no more ticking sound. Well, that's kind of good news. That's very good news, actually. I can hear some slight drag coming from the handbrake, but that just needs some adjusting, which is fine. I'll just do that right afterwards. But no more ticking sound. All right. Good news. That's very good news. All right, well, guess the sound wasn't from the bearings after all. Oops. Okay, well, I guess it's time to go for a drive again as I've not driven the car since ages. So- Wait, you thought replacing the wheel bearings would fix that sound? I mean, yeah. All the while while running two long wheel bolts? Yeah. That's pretty stupid, bro. I- Be better, man. Be better. Anyway, so let's go for a little drive. Uh, finally time to enjoy the car again. It's a nice day, the weather is good. Yeah, life's pretty good. So good to finally enjoy the car free of any sounds again. Is that, is that from my car? Another sound coming from the car, really? God, such bad luck. Just when I wanted to make some new content. Guess I'll have to fix that too. What? The car is back up on the lift again? So the completely real scratching sound you just heard is from the parking brake cables touching the drive shaft. The clip which holds the parking brake cables to the body of the car is made from plastic. What a surprise, BMW. Over time, this plastic clip fills, resulting in the cables dropping down out of its clip, now and then touching the drive shaft. And that touching of the drive shaft causes that scratching sound. So AGA Tools made a park and brake cable clip out of aluminum, so that obviously never fills, and outlives the life of the car. So we're gonna remove this part of the exhaust and the heat shield to gain access to the clip. So let's do this! All right, so as the park and brake cable clip is located over here, I think we can get away with solely removing the latter part of the exhaust and keep the mid-pipe in place. So we're first gonna undo these clamps, then these two, and also this eight millimeter screw connected to the heat shield, and then undo the connectors of the exhaust flaps.
And then finally these exhaust brackets. One over here. And one on the other side. Pretty ghetto, I know. There we go. Now what? Help. All right, I didn't quite think this through. There we go. I got this. See, I got this. All right, so then we're gonna remove this brace. There we go. So to remove the heat shield, we're going to remove six 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so now let's get this heat shield removed. Yes. There we go. It's gonna be a lot of fun to get this back together. All right, so here we have our parking brake cable clip. So this plastic clip becomes brittle over time, upon which the parking brake cables, as you can see over there, drop down, rubbing against the drive shaft, causing that scratching noise. Look how cool this is. Carbon fiber drive shaft, baby. So we're gonna remove this clip and replace it with the aluminum one. All right, so with the 13 mil, we're gonna undo this bolt. Wait, what's this? Damn, how did that get up there? That's pretty insane though. Anyway, let's undo this bolt. All right, so now that the bolt is loose, as you can see, we're gonna remove the cables from the clips. That's one, and that's two. So we're first going to remove this bolt. There we go. Now for the hardest part is to remove this plastic clip. That's apparently a bit of a pain to do. Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh. All right, well, I completely messed up the shot here, but um, the clip is out. All right, so, and at the moment the clip came out, my memory was full, but here is the plastic clip removed from the body of the car. So we're gonna quickly give this a clean. All right, so now we're gonna spray some silicone grease on the rubber grommet over there before sliding on this aluminum part. Like so. All right, so now we're gonna put these rubber sleeves on the handbrake cables over here, and two. Spray on a little bit of silicone spray. Then we're gonna fit in the lower part of the clip. Note that with an M3, the bulkier part of the clip has to face towards the rear of the car. That's because of the carbon fiber drive shaft being thicker than a regular drive shaft. Hope you can see this. So we're going to screw in the new bolt. Oh. Oh, for sake, sir. Oh, yes. All right, it's on. So now we can further tighten it with our 13. Uh. All right. Okay, that's it. It took me uh, quite some effort, but um, let me show you up close. All right, so as you can see, the rubber grommets are in place and the lower part is, well, tightened down. There we go. This is never ever gonna break again, as you can see. And uh, yeah, happy with the results. All right, so since the heat shield is hidden away under the car, I don't think it's necessary to clean it. Of course it is. All right, so let's button everything up again and continue. All right, so what's next? Next up, we have these hood struts. Not sure why these struts are so hood. 
Oh, hood struts. I noticed that the hood of the car was barely able to get itself up. Aw, oh, can't you get it up? So we're gonna replace the hood struts of the car with these OE Stabilis hood struts. So let's help this little issue and dive right into it. All right, so before we're going to undo the struts, we would first need to support the hood. All right, so grab something long and hard so that the hood doesn't fall down when we're working over here. I found this. All right, that'll do. Any other golfers watching? Show me some love in the comments. All right, so we're gonna start out by removing this plastic clip. So then there's a little black clip over here. We're gonna loosen this with a pick tool. Like so. Then we will be able to remove it. Then we're gonna remove the old grease with a little bit of brake cleaner. And don't worry about removing the grease as the new ones come pre-lubed, as you can see here. And then basically the same process for the lower part of the strut. This is a bit harder to reach. That's the clip undone. And there we go. All right, so after removing the old grease over there as well, it's time to install the new strut. You don't first have to undo these clips. The strut simply pops on the joints. Then we pop back on this clip, and that's a job well done. Then we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. All right, so let's see for the results. Can he get it up again? Oh yeah. Look at that! Damn! That's some powerful stuff. Oh yeah. All right, so that's a job well done. Now let's continue at the rear. All right, so our next issue is the opening of the trunk. The trunk opens rather violently. Oh, oh, come here. <laughs> All right, so our next issue is the opening of the trunk. This happens rather violently. You see at the end there, it has a rather hard rebound. So I suspect that the strut of the trunk has seen its best days. So we're gonna replace the strut. Let's do it. All right, so we're first going to remove the floor of the trunk. Then we're first gonna pop off this clip. Then this plastic cap. And remove this with the T40. And remove this plastic clip. Then we're gonna remove four clips over here. And remove this panel. And finally this clip. So we're gonna take off this piece of trim because the strut is located over here. First we're going to peel away this rubber lining. Then we're gonna undo this clip. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We're also gonna peel away this part of the bench. There we go. Come on. So far so good. There was a clip remaining. It's located over here. There we go. Yeah. Come on. Yes. There's a 12 volt connection here. Disconnect it. There we go. Finally. Here it is. What's this? Oh my god. That's pretty insane. All right, so here we have the strut of the hood that we're going to replace. Out of this shot, I've put the golf club between the trunk and the floor of the trunk so that it doesn't fall on my head. So now we're gonna unclip this side of the strut, then remove it, then continue on this side and pop it off. These ball joints are both clean as they've never collected dust inside, obviously. So now we're gonna pop in the new one, one and two. 
Then we're going to pop everything back together and see for the results. Well, I already, of course, tested this off camera and I was wrong. The way it closes now is exactly the same. It apparently has to do with the adjustment of the springs of the trunk. So let's go ahead and try that. <laughs> okay, well, this is actually pretty funny. I was about to show you how to adjust the springs of the trunk. In the meantime, I was cleaning up some stuff and then I found this. And this is not the old strut. This is actually the new one that had to go in. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! Yes, I'm an idiot. I installed the old strut again. I'm gonna quickly disassemble everything again and then show you the results with the new strut. Sorry. Gee, I wonder why the results were exactly the same. So off camera, I quickly went ahead and installed the new strut and these are the actual results. Watch this. Oh, did you see the soft rebound it had at the end? One more time. That's more like it. All right, so that was all for this episode. See you next time. Such an idiot. <clears throat> what is ontladen in het Engels? Oh yeah, discharge. Yeah. <clears throat> this is to prevent the battery. Oh, yeah. What, gozer? Yeah, I'm net in an opname. Yeah. Install the shorter wheel bolt. <laughs> install the st stock or standard. Install the stock. Uh, install the stock. St hey. Sorry. Um, install the standard wheel. Guess we'll have to figure out what this is. Okay, guess we'll have to... Guess we'll have to fix that sound too, then. No, sorry. Go on. Go on. Go So I'm suspecting the... So I'm suspecting the... Strut... The trunk... Hat also has. So I suspect the... Tr so I suspect the, so I suspect, so I suspect that the, so I so I suspect, so I suspect, so I suspect that the strut, so I suspect, so AGA tools made a parking brake, parking cable, brake clip, parking, parking brake cable, parking brake cable clip, so AGA, so AGA tools made a park and braking cable. Jesus. A a park cable and brake clip. So AGA tools made a. Does that what is it now? AGA tools made a parking brake cable clip. So AGA tools made a. Oh for sake! So AGA tools made a park and brake. I mean, echt zo brak. So AGA tools made a park and brake. So AGA tools made a parking brake cable. <sighs> okay. So AGA tools made. So AGA tools made a parking brake cable clip. So AGA tools made. So AGA tools made a parking brake. Yeah, you just cost parking brake cable clip.